pixel art. What a beautiful style. So tiny, but at the same time so amazing. But how did it all start? For that question, we'll need to go back 14 billion years ago where the video games had a tight scope because of the little amount of data they could use. For example, Super Mario Bros. took up 41 kilobytes. That's the size of this. So to have a full functioning game, but in a tiny amount of storage, they had to use very small sprites, resulting in creating art so small you could see the individual pixels, which we now know as pixel art. But since they were limited to basically everything, it wasn't very pleasing to the eye. But now, since we have beefy computers, it's become so much bigger. Pixel art has been brought to a brand new level. Games like Hyperlight Drifter, Celeste, and Owlboy are great examples of this, but it's easy to get intimidated by all of these amazing games. But what if I told you that you could go from your art looking like this, to this, in just these five tips? Tip number one, get inspired. What I mean by this is to not copy or steal a specific artwork you like, but to take inspiration from it. See what you like about that person's artwork and take inspiration from it and incorporate that inspiration in your art. Over time, this develops an understanding of your own style. Tip number two, reference. This is kind of like getting inspired, but this time, when you've decided what to draw, go online and search up images of that thing you want to draw. Put the images into a document and keep them next to you while you're drawing. This helps to see what that thing looks like and how you can work around drawing it. Tip number three, block out. When creating an object, don't go in and start immediately drawing the outline. I see a lot of people doing this, and it makes the object look janky and it causes some weird proportions to form on the object. What you need to do instead is block out a silhouette of your object by just using black to form some shapes combined to create what looks like your object. This will get the anatomy and the form of your object looking right. Tip number four, color theory. This is so important in video games. Colors are what differentiates beautiful games from amateur games. If you have good colors that work well together in your game, people will want to play it. I know that color can be explained in a whole hour of a video, but honestly the best thing to do when it comes to color is to just download a palette. Don't worry, it's not cheating at all. It's completely fine to use another person's palette. Color isn't like a drawing that you can steal. It's a theory that anyone can use. Websites like Lostpec, Adobe Color, or even Google are great for finding palettes. There are so many amazing colors in our strange world of ours, so go explore, find the colors that you like, and use them. Although, colors impact the feel of your game. For example, a warm palette portrays that your game is welcoming and inviting but a cool palette sets the less inviting mood, more like a don't come here mood. Saturation can also impact the feel of your game. A very saturated game like Mario Kart suggests that the game is fun and friendly, but a desaturated palette can show that it has a deep story and a serious feel to the game. So if you can't find a color palette that fits your game, I have one very important tip for you, hue shifting. This seriously makes your colors so much nicer. When you are making a color darker, decrease the lightness, go towards the vibrant side a bit, and shift the hue towards blue. If you are thinking of making a color lighter, increase the lightness, make it a bit less vibrant, and slide the hue towards yellow. Now for comparison, this is a drawing without hue shifting, and this is a drawing with hue shifting. It's not much of a difference, but in my opinion, hue shifting is my best friend when it comes to color. Now for my fifth and final tip, watch tutorials. I know this is a bit self-explanatory, but the more tutorials you watch, the more knowledge you'll know about pixel art. I personally have watched over a hundred tutorials on pixel art, and I still need to learn more, and there is so much more for me to learn. I have linked some videos in the description of amazing tutorials, so if you're interested in learning more pixel art, go and watch them. But overall, keep on learning and have fun doing it. And that, my friends, is how to pixel art.